Okay, the title says Heavy Metal versus Pop. So obviously I'm going to be comparing two completely different styles of music. How many YouTube videos have I seen featuring people saying, Pop rules, metal sucks, metal rules, pop people can go to hell. It seems like I stumble on this crap constantly and I'm honestly tired of it. Those who are subscribed to me already know that I'm a proud headbanger and I'm loyal to the style of music that I enjoy. It doesn't mean that I just enjoy heavy metal, there is some pop I do enjoy as well. So here I'll compare the similarities and of course the differences between the intense, epic heavy metal music versus the catchy, fun pop music. Now, much more prevalent for me way back in high school than it is now. Whenever I tell someone I listen to heavy metal, they immediately think that what I listen to is very simplistic, repetitive, mindless noise. So I ask, what did they prefer listening to? And they say, pop, like Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Rihanna. But to me, most pop is mindless, repetitive noise. That sounds mostly the same. Now, in the differences with the music, when you're trying to figure out what you prefer, it's either memorable versus rhythmic. Metal music is definitely more complex, harder to play, and there's little to no fixing in the studios. It's pretty much raw, straight from the heart. The artists I've also seen live also don't lip sync, unlike a lot of pop artists. But why is it that a lot of pop music fans will mock metal by saying stuff like, uh, you can play guitar for 10 hours and you can do big solos, big whoop. You guys don't know real music. The reason is simple. And the quote comes from the movie Amadeus which is about a classical composer whose music composition was far more complex than his competition. Too many notes. In other words, their ears cannot hear all the notes that I can because it's not catchy. Pop music is mostly attention-grabbing and catchy. How many times have we had pop songs stuck on our head? A lot, right? Now, how many times have we had them stuck on our head, finding ourselves singing the words and humming the tune, even though we actually hate the song? And what do we always find ourselves asking? Why is this song so damn catchy? I mean, that song Moves Like Jagger is horrible. It's got nothing to offer. But the melody is too catchy. And as soon as you hear that opening whatever, you know it's that song. Same with a song like Call Me Maybe, which I hear everywhere I go now. But it's a lame song. However, it always gets stuck in my head every time I hear it. On the other hand, metal music is about a rhythmic flow, and it doesn't need to be repetitive to stay catchy. But I wish I could keep my favorite metal song stuck in my head, but I can't. Why? Because it's more rhythmic, and the instruments and voices are all part of the rhythm. So there's a lot of notes to have to remember, especially when it's either fast or progressive. However, that's not a bad thing. Because if the songs were always stuck in my head, then I'd probably not want to listen to it. Therefore, when I do listen to a good metal song, I can still get that deep, amazing feeling again and again, no matter how many times I hear it. Then it's also no surprise to me that metal songs that actually are catchy quickly lose their grip on me. Songs like Iron Man, Fuel, Inner Sandman, Walk, Breaking the Law, Ace of Spades, basically anything by ACDC. Songs that are really popular amongst most audiences, but rarely played on my own iPod. I mean, they're not bad songs, but they're easy to remember, and how can you not get tired of them? The only times I ever listen to songs like Inner Sandman and Sad But True by Metallica are when I see them play it live. On my iPod, they're usually skipped. And don't get me started on good pop songs that are overplayed. I mean... That song by Gautier, anything by Adele, any other song that actually might have credibility with me gets ruined when I keep hearing him. I kid you not, I think I've heard somebody that I used to know being played on five different radio stations at roughly the same time within the same hour. Stop playing it! And adding a catchy dance beat to it does not automatically make it different. And the other thing with metal versus pop is you're either thinking catchy and simplistic versus progressive and diverse. Now, there are some good pop songs. It's inevitable not to enjoy a few of them. 
especially because they dominate the radio stations and wherever you go. And of course, I actually like a few of them. And I don't mind people like Lady Gaga, Britney Spears, Christine Aguilera, Justin Timberlake. But people like LMFAO, Rihanna, Jim Class Heroes, Kesha, Miley Cyrus, and Rebecca Black need to be gone from the face of the earth. And I cannot stand hearing their crap on the radio anymore, and I can't stand hearing about them anymore. I honestly can't tell which one is which anymore, because all they are to me are catchy beats with singers having their voices enhanced. Yet it's funny how many pop fans claim all metal sounds the same, how it's all pretty much loud growling with everything sounding distorted. Uh, metal is actually more diverse than pop, believe it or not. Sure, I know there's subgenres like pop rock, slash pump, dance pop, etc., but they're not really noteworthy to me because as long as it's about being catchy and simplistic, it's still the same mold to me. Therefore, pop music should be really categorized in these categories. You got the flavors of the month, the one-hit wonders, the wrong reason stars, and the legend copiers. On the other hand, metal probably has more subgenres than it needs to have. It's actually a small fraction of the metal pie, believe it or not. And I actually prefer cleaner vocals opposed to screaming. When it comes to the subgenres, there's good old traditional heavy metal, thrash metal, power metal, progressive metal, industrial metal, symphonic metal, death metal, black metal, and even that is just a fraction. There's too many subgenres almost, but at least I can actually tell the difference between them, unlike a lot of people. Now, if you think metal is just a man's genre, believe it or not, there actually are a lot of female-fronted bands, too. Nightwish, Within Temptation, Epica, Lacuna Coil are very popular where they hail from. I mean, Nightwish is only the number one band in Finland. Gosh! A lot of metal musicians also try to experiment with newer sounds and other genres, and oftentimes, their later work is different than their earlier work, with reactions, of course, on both ends. But that's what actual good musicians do. They try different sounds to progress their music ability, rather than sticking to the same formula. Even if I don't like the new sound or the new album, I still applaud the musician for trying something different. Pop, on the other hand, seems the same exact sound to me. So much to the point where it gives me a headache. It feels like it's the same beat, even if it's a different song. The crap that's played in clubs makes me want to hurl. But, once in a blue moon, there is that one pop song that sounds very different on the radio. And instantly I like it. But then all of a sudden, the song gets killed. Why? Because suddenly everyone else likes it too. And they overplay the crap out of it. What? A song sounds different and good? Let's keep listening to it because all the other stuff sounds the same. Let's keep putting it on the radio because it's different. Oh, that song is different and people like it? Let's copy that style so people will listen to us. And then after a while, the song fades into obscurity and starts to sound exactly like the rest. And then when it comes to the lyrics, you have partying and attention grabbing versus realistic and deep. Ironically, pop influence has a worse attitude than metal music does, even though metal lyrics are typically darker in tone. Pop music is not known for lyrics being meaningful in tone. Maybe some are, but most of the time, it seems to be more about selling sex, partying, and having the simplest rhymes so they can stay catchy. Therefore, we get stuck humming them. The catchy beat hides the fact that most lyrics in pop music are terrible. And not just terrible, but even inappropriate and wrong. Why don't we just look at one of, one of these songs that I just happened to search by Google. Noisy Neighbor by Akon. And it reads, My binoculars on alone, standing out of my window. I see the best creation of a woman that I ever saw in a long, long time. Some say it's wrong. But what if she knows that I'm spying on her? What if, would she strip down naked and entertain me? Oh my god, she's doing it, taking it off. She's getting naked. Uh, oh, what? And these songs are more acceptable? And metal lyrics are considered worse? Oh my god, this song that I just read is very obvious what it's talking about. And people listen to this and people use these songs as role models 
So it makes it acceptable to be some creepy peeping Tom? What? Sure. And then there's that genre called glam metal. You know, guys that played heavy metal music. Guys like Poison, Bon Jovi, Motley Crue. That made simple songs with pop lyrics. And that's why they faded into obscurity. The bands that also arose from that decade that weren't like them are still selling out shows wherever they go. Where about where are most of the 80s pop artists? Gone. Obscurity. Where are most of the 90s pop artists? Gone. Where are most of the heavy metal artists that started in the 80s? Still playing, still selling out. How about that, huh? And then all the metal songs I've listened to. Yes, some are controversial too. Some are apocalyptic stories, horror stories, fantasy novels, political and mythological, but not all of them are. Most of them are simply the artist's feelings being put on paper. A lot of my favorite songs are actually the ones with deep, meaningful lyrics. The ones that are deep emotional memories being retold. These songs have dealt with subjects like death, heartbreak, stress, and are pretty much about life. And believe it or not, there's some that are even about celebrating life and are about hope and triumph. What? A metal song about hope and triumph? I kid you not, they exist. These songs are also very open to interpret, and you can interpret them in multiple ways, almost any way you want to. This example I'll bring up is a good personal song to me. It's called Build Me Up, Break Me Down by Dream Theater. And I read, Today I will be your savior, tomorrow a demon. You crave my erratic behavior and watch my every move. Obsession at all cost, you'll be the death of me. Broken and torn apart, why can't you let me be? Now, you can interpret this song as a public figure who's constantly the victim of polarizing views on him, like a movie star, a politician. Or you can interpret it my way, which is about an abusive relationship where the abuser is constantly polarizing his or her views on you. Like, one day you're the best thing to that person and they can't live without you, and the next day you're a nuisance to them that needs to be eradicated. To me... That's better than the crap that's being played on the PA systems everywhere. And you name it, the topic has probably been covered in a heavy metal song. I don't hear about many pop songs that have biblical, literal, and movie influences in the lyrics. I don't hear about pop songs being about historical events and figures. For my argument, metal is the better genre here. It's deeper, more diverse, and ironically, much more beautiful of a genre than generic pop music is. It's also a great emotional outfit for a lot of people, especially me, who can't play an instrument, but feel the outlet energy, and I feel a big emotional high after concerts and such. The music moves me immensely. Pop music, especially the crap that's in clubs, does not. So for those who are going to say, pop music is better, metal sucks, I leave this video with a quote from filmmaker Sam Dunn, the filmmaker of the documentary Metal, A Headbanger's Journey. This quote, Ever since I was 12, I had to defend my love for heavy metal music against those who say it's a less valid form of music. My answer now is that you either feel it or you don't. If metal music doesn't give you that overwhelming surge of power that makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck, you might never get it. And you know what? That's okay. Because judging by the 40,000 metalheads around me, we're doing just fine without you. I'm Desert Coyote 22. Thanks for listening.